Hello guys, it is uh, chapter nine today for Completely Clementine. I hope you're having a good day. Um, where I am in Maryland, it's pretty warm, 60, 58 degrees. I hope it's warm where you are. Um, so find a nice spot to just listen to this book. You can read along if you had it, have it at your house and just sit back and relax. And um, I wanted to show you something from my garden. These yellow daffodils, they just bloomed here in Maryland in my yard. Can you smell them? Mm, they smell pretty good. Do you like the smell of flowers? Mm, yeah, some are good. These smell pretty good actually. Give me a thumbs up if you like them. If you like smelling any flowers. Yeah, okay. I like the smell of them too. Um, so I'm really glad to see you again. And um, we're on chapter nine. I don't know if I said that, but I'm really glad to see you. It's a nice day here. And I also have to say that my one of my favorite things in the world is reading to kids or to adults. So it's my uh, honor and privilege to read you chapter nine of Completely Clementine. Here you go. Back in my apartment, my dad was just coming out of my parents' bedroom. She's resting, sport, he said, as he closed the door. I'm taking her out tonight to dinner to celebrate our anniversary. Give your mom a treat. You kids are gonna have a good treat too, though. Shh, guess what? Your brother's sleeping over with Uncle Frank and Aunt Claire, and you are going to spend the night with Margaret in the fanciest hotel in Boston. Go pack a bag, your toothbrush and pajamas. Here's a little picture. I ran into my room and I stuck my pajamas and my toothbrush into my backpack. Then I added the rolled up poster of my old cat, Polka Dottie, that I sometimes, okay fine, almost always need to look at before I go to sleep. I patted moisturizer goodbye then I walked down the hall. At my parents' door, I knocked at exactly the right loudness. Knock, 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 knock. Quiet enough that if my mom was asleep, it would awake her, but loud enough that if she was awake, she could hear it. My mom said, come on in, honey. You look like a volcano, I told her as I climbed carefully on the bed beside her. I know, she said. She put her book down. She said, so, you're going to a fancy hotel tonight. I hear ya, la-dee-da. Yep, but mom, how come you're in bed? Oh honey, I'm resting. Being a volcano takes a lot of energy and I have to save up for the big eruption. Then I thought of something I never, never thought of before. Will it hurt, I asked, the big eruption? My mom shrugged. Mostly, it's gonna be a lot of work. So I really need to get some extra rest, especially if I'm going out tonight. You go on now and have fun. Okay, honey? This was her with her mom. So her mom's in bed. About to have a big eruption. I said, okay, and I kissed her goodbye. A few minutes later, my brother and I got into the car with my dad and we drove to Uncle Frank and Aunt Claire's. Tuna fish or egg salad, Aunt Claire asked holding out platters of sandwiches. Cauliflower and I picked at our egg salad. My dad took tuna. Fish have feelings, you too, I'm, you know, I said. Fish have feelings too, you know, I muttered into my sandwich. My dad had already gone off to eat with Uncle Frank on the deck. After lunch, I reminded Aunt Claire and Uncle Frank that my brother is allergic to peanuts, which they know, but I felt better saying it. And then my dad and I drove to the Park Plaza Hotel. On the way, my dad talked to me about some things we would do on our summer vacation. We were gonna try all 37 flavors at the ice cream shop. And we were gonna camp out on the top floor of our building to watch for shooting stars, which we love to do. And then we're gonna collect enough pigeon feathers, feathers to make a pair of wings. Oh, that would be fun. Can you flap your arms? Flap, flap. That sounded so great, but I made myself remember the tuna fish in his sandwich and the cow in his meatloaf and didn't answer him. And then after we parked and were walking up to the hotel, he stopped to crouch down and looked me straight in the eyes. Straight in the eyes. Sorry about that. 
straight in the eye. Not talking to each other doesn't work. Not in this family, he said. I appreciate that you have such strong feelings about me not eating animals, but I don't feel the same way. So how about we compromise? In our home, vegetarian is the rule, but for the rest of the year, I'm willing to try that. But out of the house, when I'm visiting Uncle Frank or we're at a restaurant, I'll choose what I want. That's the best I can do, and you're going to have to accept that, accept that, all right? I shrugged and scooped my head around in a circle. Not yes, but not no either. Well, at least promise me you'll think about it, okay? For a moment, I did think about this compromise. Good, mostly my father wouldn't eat animals, which I liked. Bad, sometimes he still would. I felt like half of the dangerous lemon instantly disappeared from my throat. Blah, it's all gone. But here's the news about lemon, lemons. Even with only one half in your throat, it's still hard to talk. So I just nodded about the think about it part and promise and didn't say a word. My dad stood up and then we walked up to the hotel driveway together. A tall man in a uniform greeted us. He said, welcome to the Boston Park Plaza. And he bowed. Then he held the door open and swooped us in and he made his arm like a game show host guiding us in. Will you be staying with us this evening, he said. I bowed back as my dad answered. My daughter will be checking in. The doorman smiled as if this was the news he'd been waiting for all his life. He bowed again and asked if he could take my luggage. My luggage, I said with another bow. He tipped his eyebrows to my backpack. Oh, my luggage, I said. I wriggled my backpack off and took out the poster of Polka Dottie. I'd better carry this myself, I said. And then I handed him the backpack. It was a good thing he'd taken my backpack because when I saw the inside of that lobby, I almost fell over. A huge glittering, glittering chandelier hung from the ceiling, which looked like a hundred feet high. The floors were marble and there were shiny leather couches and satin drapes everywhere you looked. I gave my dad's hand a squeeze in case the fancy enough, fanciness of this lobby was making him feel bad about our plane lobby back at home. And he squeezed my hand back. At the registration desk, the doorman handed my backpack to another man in a uniform. This is Raul, he, who will be your bellhop, he said. He will assist you to your room. The lady behind the desk wore a name tag that said, Lindsay. We gave her Margaret's father's name and we waited while she checked a list. I figured it was probably criminals who aren't allowed into the park plaza list. You don't have to worry. I've never been in jail, I told her. But if a kid named Baxter ever tries to get in, watch out, I said. Lindsay said that was good to know. And then she handed me a tiny envelope with a plastic card inside and pointed us to the elevators. The elevators gleamed like golden mirrors. My dad must have seen me wondering if the condo association and our building would go for bronze elevator doors because he shook his head sadly and said, not a chance. Raul followed us to the elevator. Here he is following them to the elevator. He tried to push the buttons, but I told him he could take a few minutes off because I am an expert in operating elevators. On the way up, Raul's eyes kept glancing at my poster. So I unrolled it and I let him look at Polka Dottie. That is quite a cat, he said, after he admired her for a few floors. She was, I said, rolling her back up safely. She died last spring and I'm still sad about that. But in the fall, I got a new kitten who's having a birthday this summer. And then he won't be a kitten anymore. He'll be a cat. Like Polka Dottie was, except he's different from her, which I'm glad about. Uh, my birthday's in September. I'll be nine, five. I'll be five and four. I'll be nine. She'll be nine. Nine, nine, nine. And we're having a baby soon. Do you have a tattoo? But before Raoul could answer any of my questions, we were at the 16th floor. 
I told my feet not to run down the long hallway. And for once, my feet listened to me, although they weren't very happy about it. At the, at the room, Raul showed me how to slide the card down the slot of the door handle. And then a green light flash, blink, blink, and the door popped open. Margaret's father welcomed us in. And he started talking with my father while Ra Raul put my backpack on a luggage stand. Behind him, I saw Margaret sitting on a couch with her foot propped up on pillows. Her ankle was wrapped up like a mummy. And there was a pair of crutches beside her. Margaret, I gasped, what happened? Oh no. Ugh, a fashion accident, she said at last. Then she lowered her head to glare over at her brother. She sharpened her voice and shot him a word arrow. It was worth it. My dad secret handed me a folded up dollar bill and then nodded toward Raul. Tip, he whispered. So I secret handed Raul the dollar bill and whispered, tip. I also told him that nobody had ever carried my backpack better than he had, uh, except me, of course. And this made him even happier than the dollar bill did. He bent down, tugged his collar aside to show me a tattoo of a dragon <gasps> swirling around his neck, and then he left. When I went over to ask Margaret about, Margaret about her foot, her chin started to tremble. <sighs> she picked up mascara and hugged him tight. Then she ordered me into the bathroom so I could admire the sanitize for your production tape wrapped around the glasses. I figured it was really to do so she could wipe all the tears off of her face. Margaret doesn't like to people let like people see her when she's crying. So I stayed in there a little while. And the bathroom was great all right. Marble everything. And Margaret had been telling the truth about the individually wrapped soaps. There were other single serving size things too tiny bottles of shampoo and conditioner and moisturizer. The towels were folded into crisp fans, like the pages of a book, fans. And the toilet paper ends were tucked into perfect triangles. Can you make a triangle? You can do it with your fingers if you put your top two pointer fingers together and your thumbs. So they were folded into perfect triangles. All the while I was in there, I kept an ear out for my dad who was still chatting with Margaret's dad. Well, thanks again for having her, I heard him say. We really appreciate it. We'll give you a call tomorrow. And then he called out, bye Clementine. Then I heard him leave. And suddenly, I didn't want to be alone in that fancy bathroom anymore. All right, that is the end of chapter nine and we'll get pick it back up on chapter 10. All right. See you in a few minutes. Thanks for listening. I really appreciate y'all.